It's week five of the Teddy Bear Picnic, and today we will be going on a bingo scavenger hunt around Lime River to learn and discover about the history of different locations. While we go on this tour, I'm going to be explaining some history to you guys. And don't forget to take your teddy bears along, because when you take pictures and send them to us, you get entries into that draw we talked about before. All right, let's go. Museum was first established in 1967 as a project to celebrate Canada's centennial. It was built right about here and had a few small buildings which made a sort of small historical village which included a blacksmith shop and an aquarium. In the 1970s the museum needed to be moved to make space for the new school that was being built which is also right here. When they were moving the museum they weren't just moving to a new building they literally picked up some of the old buildings and put them on a transport to bring them all the way to this location where the museum stayed for many years with statues of Paul Bunyan and Dave the Blue Ox in front. But what happened to the museum since then? You'll have to wait till the end of the video to find out. Our next location is not too far from the old museum site, the Northern Ontario Lodge Memorial. part of the foundation of Blind River. This memorial was made to remember the loggers who died during the Blind River log drive. It was sculpted by an artist named Laura Brown Breefell in the year 2000 as a millennial project. Each of these statues stands over seven feet tall and the trees are nearly 25 feet tall. And now we're heading downtown to a building which I think has a pretty interesting history, Blind River Public Library. built in 1939 as a post office and then it became a police station and jail. Afterward, there was a town hall fire and then they moved into this building. And then it wasn't until 1999 that it actually became the public library. And now they're open again in person so you can go and borrow books. Next, we're going to the Cenotaph. serves as a symbol to remember the brave men and women who lost their lives during the wars. When you come here, you can read the names of people that we wish to remember. The money to build the war memorial was raised at Blind River's first community day way back in 1946. 3,000 people participated and raised over $3,200. going to is just past the traffic lights, the early on child and family center that has been helping us with various activities throughout the course of the teddy bear picnic. This building was originally built in 1928 as the Masonic Hall for the Penawobicon Lodge number 487. It has been the home of the early on child and family center ever since 2000. And now we need to walk for a very, very long time before we finally reach, oh, look, Blind River Public School. The public school that existed in town decided to expand in 1928. So they built this school as a continuation school, which would be similar to a high school nowadays for grades nine to 13. Back in the day, kids weren't expected to go to school once they were old enough to work, especially if they lived on a farm. Later, kids didn't need to go to work as early as before, so there were more students, which meant that in 1958, they decided to move grades 6 to 8 to this school. Now, BRPS is a school for kindergarten to grade 8, and will soon be moving to a new location, joining with the high school to become one school in the next few years. This next location is one of my personal favorites, Sellers Beach. Mr. Sellers, whom the beach was named after, was a logging superintendent, which pretty much means that he was just an important person during the Blind River's logging days. Back in the day, this beach would have been used to transport logs for the logging company. Nowadays, many people enjoy swimming here in the summer. This wonderful Next up is the Boom Camp. Traditionally, the 
this would have been a gathering place for the Anishinaabe during the spring and summer. During the log drive, this area was used as an encampment in the spring to sort through the logs that were floated down the river and collected in the log booms at the mouth of the Mississauga. The posts we can see sticking out of the water over here would have been used back in the day to keep the logs from floating away while they were being floated down the river. Because logs were collected in these log booms, that's what led to the Boom Camp's name. Boom and encampment. Boom Camp. Nowadays, people enjoy hiking here in the summer and skiing and snowshoeing in the winter. Not to mention the amazing ice formation that happened here this March that many people got to come see. And now we're back to where we started. In 2019, the Timber Village Museum moved to the beautiful Marine Park. Well, I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to take pictures with your teddy bears at all of these locations. And then don't forget to sign up for our in-person teddy bear picnic August 19th. I can't wait to see everyone getting out and having fun. We'll see you then. Bye!